Hello, it's my waving hand. There you go. Um, just to break up the, the, I wouldn't say, I don't want to say tempt fate by saying monotony <laughs> of my of my Q&A marathons. Um, I thought I'd show you what I've been buying. Um, I haven't been buying much. I mean, it's, it's been about it's been about a month almost since my last uh, purchases video, but um, <clears throat> haven't been buying a lot. But just this the last weekend, so last Saturday, almost the, what I'd uh, bought, what the amount I bought, doubled. So I had a little bit of a little bit of a score. I had a, I had a, had a good run on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. So I mean, looking at it now all together, it's it's actually a pretty good collection of stuff. It's one or two things I've paid a little bit more for, but apart from that, I'm pretty pleased. If I'm honest, <laughs> and there was something I was going to say, but I can't even remember. So I'll crack on. Crack on. I thought I'd. Uh, change the perspective as also to uh, to shake it up a bit but you know uh, we'll I'll be cracking back onto the the Q and A videos where after this this is like I said this is just a this is just a, a break to, to a break to mix it up a bit you know so here we go um two char uh, random charity shop uh purchases in the same place both the same price mega drive games First one, that mm -hmm. no, That is, hold it out and get rid of the glare. That's Toe Jam and Earl. Toe Jam and Earl. For um, one ninety nine. I know um, Cod 2 fans sent me this. Sent me a cart of this um, in, in our recent trades package. But um, I, I saw this and it is boxed. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I rarely see Mega Drive games, so I'll, I'll definitely keep him both because this is a keeper. But um, uh, Kotsu fans, car he sent me is is a, a definite keeper. I mean, this is more more likely to be sold on eBay than the other one, you know, because because he sent me that out of the kind of his heart. So, so I'll cherish that one more than this one. But uh, I'd like to just like to have a box version. I don't know why, it's just a, one of my, my weird foibles. <laughs> that says one ninety nine. Oh, where is it? That's a, there, there, that price. One ninety nine. There you go. One ninety nine. And on the shelf together, I, I'm guessing it was a Mega Drive fan. My very first Japanese Japanese Mega Drive game. My very first Japanese game whatsoever. That is uh, Marvel Land. Um, also one ninety nine. Known as uh, Talmit's Adventure in Power Regions, apparently, or in the West. Obviously, can't use this, so I think this will be up for trade. Although, it's actually pretty good nick. It's actually in pretty good nick. It's uh, The case is really nice. The, the It's all there. The cartridge. This, this, the, the label's alright, but. It looks a bit sort of um, just tired, maybe, and the uh, the manual is a bit yellowed in that sense. But also, it's got this in it. But some cheeky scamp's been writing on it, whatever. A la mode, sweetie. Was that Chulin? Some gobbled gook. And also trying to work out how to, how to spell trident, trident or thrident. Also on the, on the back of the manual, you see that Felios, Bembo, and Momo. <laughs> Felios, Bembo, and Momo. Does that mean anything to anyone? Is that part of the maybe that's part of the game? Is that part of the game? But uh, I've, I've actually discovered um, uh, uh, so you can see it. That's going to be a really awkward little place, isn't it? But. Um, yeah, if I shuffle, sh shuffle around, maybe I'll be able to... Yeah, that's better. As long as I still get to my mouse. Yeah, there you go. 
Um, yeah, uh, that is Marvel Land. Um, there's a, a short gameplay video by, um, in, um, sorry, um, Evil Slothman uh, of Marvel Land. It's got a little sticker on it. What sticker is that? Is that a Transformers sticker? I see it, no. But anyway, those are both one ninety nine each. Random purchase. Um, <clears throat> a few days later, uh, I went. Um, I think I mentioned in the past there are two branches of computer exchange near me. My hometown is Enfield, but there's one in Edmonton, which is literally just a bus ride away. I don't know why there's two in such cl close proximity, but they are. Um, Edmonton one's okay, but it's got all loads of weird sort of um, caseless games on the shelves with all with like photocopied sleeves. So I didn't get anything in there, but I went for a look around Edmonton. And they've got um, they've got a quite a nice little uh, independent game shop, and I found Project Overkill there on a Blue Tonic Seventy Eight recommendation. It's a, it's a bit bashed around, but I think it just needs a bit of a buff up. And that was a uh, two ninety nine. Um, I've had a go, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good for, if I'm honest. I did enjoy it. But my only problem is that the uh, the aiming's a bit a bit off. It's you can only aim eight ways, I suppose you can, it's like that in all games, but this one in particular seems to spend a lot of time shooting past people, which is a bit awkward considering a lot of the game seems to be to do with conserving um, conserving ammo and, and energy, because it's tough. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't get beyond, I didn't get beyond the first level. But, um, uh, hang on, excuse me, I'm just going to take a bit of a... Bit of a break. Sorry about that. I was keep getting disturbed. I was just I could hear things going on, and I had to go and I had to go investigate what it was. It was just <laughs> it just kept getting my attention, and I was going. Rrr. It was annoying me. But um, yeah, Project Overkill. Um, it's 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 a, sort of an arcadey shooter, but tactical in the sense that you need to conserve ammo and, and energy. And uh, which makes the sort of the slightly awkward aiming um, something to get used to. I mean, it's all all it is is to get used to it. But um, I, I, I did enjoy it, and, and it was a a good recommendation by um, Blue Tonic Seventy Eight, two ninety nine. Um, the same day, I mean, in um, Edmonton has they have um, a branch of cash converters, and I thought you know I'll, I'll always go and check them out. I mean, I'm never hopeful with cash converters. But in this case, in this situation, this time, you know, they came up trumps. Um, first game, okay, Evil Zone. I think based on an anime. I don't know anything about the anime. I'm sure it's based on an anime, just for the presentation, because it's it's presented like um, like an anime. I mean, you play through the, the story mode, and it has this sort of cheesy voiceover. Presenting it as an as each round of you fight as an episode in in the anime, and it's to do is evil zone. I think this character here, her, she's she's this character called Ihodoka, like that. And the guy the guy says it like that. And um, she apparently she's been trapped in the evil zone. And she's going to resurrect or something or escape. And all these all these characters down here are intergalactic fighters who have to fight amongst themselves to be who's to find who's the the uh, the toughest to take on Ihodoka because he keeps saying it. That's how the voiceover says it. He goes Evil Zone, and it's um it's a very famous. It's quite a retro style game actually. I, I like I do like the the stylings because it's just the way it's presented and this voiceover give it a really retro feel, and it appeals to me. I mean I didn't get so much out of the game to start off with. I. I, uh, I was playing as his one character, he's like this sort of dude in this dark suit, and I couldn't get him to do much other than sort of waft his hand, and I got my ass kicked. It's I think it's it's a one-on-one -on -one uh, one -on -one fighter, but it has a, a lot of emphasis on projectiles. I think you have different strengths of projectiles, but I'll have, I, if I'm honest, I'm going to have to read through the manual to, to see if I can get more out of the game to, to understand the control scheme. But that was, upside down, that was 99p. 99p, yeah. Um, also, uh, probably a, a better buy, but more expensive. 
It's a bit of a turn up for the books, this one. Lunar Legends. This is, I think this is the, the GBA version of um, Lunar the Silver Star Story, I think. And none of the games, apart from recently on the PSP, actually, no, none of the games have ever made it over to um, Power Regions, I don't think. So when I saw this, I mean, it's an RPG, it's my sort of game, and it was, it, to be honest, it was 10 quid, it was 9.99. So I had, to, I had to grab it, even though it was slightly more expensive than I'm normally prepared to pay. But um, where else am I ever going to see it? Because they do pop up on eBay, but it's quite strange, really, because it, this game doesn't seem to be on people's radar in the UK. Because one was one was up for up for auction on eBay, and then it was withdrawn because only I think it has got to about four days, and only like it had four viewings on the whole, you know, for the whole um, whole three days it was already on. So. Which is strange, so which, which says you might be able to get a bargain if you're ever on the lookout for it. But um, it's, it's all complete, and it was 9.99. I'm just really chuffed to have it. There's, there's never going to be an op I'm never really going to have an opportunity to have it unless I seek it out on eBay because they have to come from America unless there's someone in the UK has already got one. But um, I mean, it's the same with the PSP games. You have to, I think, you have to import the PSP version, don't you? I mean, we've never got the we never had the um, the PS1 games, so an opportunity to have one of these, one of this series, the Lunar series, I can't, couldn't really pass it up, even though it was 10 quid. Um, moving on, this was um, another another uh, yeah, cash generator gamble. Lost Kingdoms on a GameCube. Um, there you go, that way. Lost Kingdoms on a GameCube. This this was I saw it for 1.99. It was 99p postage. And they were as good as they have been in the past. Um, they took maybe slightly longer to post it, but once it had been posted, it turned up inside a day. And I had the same, I had the same uh, uh, CityLink courier again for 99p postage, which was just bizarre. And um, it's pretty good, Nick. It's worthwhile. I mean, I only pay 2.98 for it in total. So it's a funny game. I think the its main Draw is the um, main draw is the the battle system, and that seems to be a lot of the game. It's a it's sort of card based battle system RPG, but I've not tried it to be honest. But it, it was on my list because obviously being an RPG fan, as people will say, I had to give it a go. Lost Kingdoms uh, again. Uh, it didn't. It was a City Link, but it didn't come in that weird cardboard envelope. The other one did. Uh, something I had my eye on in um, computer exchange. It's Crimson Sea Two. This is like uh, a poor man's um, Sin and Punishment. It's a cross between Sin and Punishment and Dynasty Warriors, but unfortunately, probably slightly closer to Dynasty Warriors than Sin and, Sin and Punishment in quality. But that's doing it a disservice because it's it's good fun. It's 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 RPG elements. It's um, sort of a third-person shooter, stroke hack and slash with quite basic RPG elements and it's just really good fun whereas uh, Crimson Sea 1 or Crimson Sea was on the Xbox Crimson Sea 2 for some reason was only on the PS2 but the the bonus for this one is that it's you can have two players ooh, ooh, two players you know if you've got a friend and uh, you can have lots of Crimson Sea 2 fun Lovely stuff. Um, I I had a random find in some charity shops near me, and they were selling some. They were selling P all their PS2 games for 49p each, and they weren't games I was really interested in. But a lot of them had really good boxes, and so I, I bought four and swapped out swapped out the boxes for four of my games that needed swapping. But then I checked on the Computer Exchange website and I realised I could get um, £4.50 for it. So I took the advantage and got Resident Evil on the GameCube. So with the initial outlay of just under two quid plus, this was actually, can you see it here? That was six pounds. With the initial outlay of two quid plus the uh, the extra £1.50, this cost me just over £3.50. And so, um, I've now got one, two, three, and four of the Resident Evil games. So whether or not I'll bother getting the Wii version, I'm not too sure. 
although you know with the different control control scheme that will you know it does pretty much a whole new game isn't it a whole new spin on it but these are every, everyone knows the quality of these so that's a bit of a no-brainer especially if I could take advantage of this little find I had and finally just for this first batch this is this is all pretty much one month's worth um, I went to see my old nan <laughs> went to see my old nan because she's you know she's getting on she's old she's nearly 90 and I, I, I always say it's an excuse to go around her uh, hometown charity shops but they had nothing because she's got loads of charity shops there's about 10, 15 she's in Tunbridge Wells little tip there anybody ever that goes to Tunbridge Wells they've got loads of charity shops but I got this in HMV this was 4 98 and it's uh, Enchanted Arms and it's uh, quite an early pretty bog standard RPG but um these things for me they're always worth playing even they might be bog standard but it's it's the it's the the feeling of familiarity which is comforting that's, that's why I like them and I think that's probably why most people like them they make me feel warm and fuzzy inside <laughs> uh, that's 4 dollars from HMV and this actually no one more one more uh, ran, randomly in a charity shop uh, Grand Theft Auto 2 this was one forty nine, and it's all there and I don't know if you remember from a few pickups ago, I got Grand Theft Auto and it, it had the, uh, it's obviously got the uh, the retro stylings, but there are two issues of Grand Theft Auto 2, I think. One with the slightly more modern stylings with like a, the name along there, or this one with the retro one. And obviously the first game's got the retro stylings. Me being me with my, you know, slightly obsessive edge, I wanted, I wanted the, uh, Grand Theft Auto GTA 2 with the retro stylings and I saw it in a charity shop and it's all there but it's got a weird sort of unbranded sort of generic case it's all the same shape but it hasn't got like the uh, it hasn't got the frosted edge with the PlayStation printed along there which is weird so that will need changing out but uh, 149 that's, that's a thumb up job done there you go